posted a few years ago, uh, 43,000 views, 1,700 comments, most of them, of them calling me names I won't repeat out loud. Pretty cool. <laughs> So that's a, it's a good point Jason just made, so if you put it in quotes, it will put all those words together. Although in this case, I don't know where, um, it doesn't look like it's working in, in this particular case. Um, oh, that's actually, there's no result. Okay, so sorry, there's no results for Blue Sky Factory Sucks in this case, when it's in quotation. Hey, by so the way, together. real quick, does everybody know how, that, how to use that search in quotation marks? Yes. I that's if you're looking for the exact phrase. So if you, if you type in Jason Falls Sucks, then it finds every page that has Jason, every page that has Falls, every page that has Sucks, and then tries to put them all together. If you type it in in quotation marks, it gives you the exact phrase Jason Paul Sucks. So it, it helps you refine your search more specifically. Okay, so I, I like to start off with that because it's, you should, as I mentioned, you should know what people are saying about you. This is kind of an easy way to look at some of the negative. Um, you could do the same thing with, again, other words, awesome, rocks, the best. Uh, okay, so I think that's really the most important thing. If if you are if you're selling something that people don't like, being in social media may not be the best place for you. Okay, the second big thing is listen, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this one because we're going to do a whole group activity that's talking about listening. Uh, but this particular image is from Dell. I think this was about a year ago. They started an entire. Uh, you can see on the, the window here, Social Media Listening Command Center. And so you talked about time and resources. They did, went the opposite. Um, they had money, they had time, they had resources. They built an entire command center where all they were doing was listening what people were saying about Dell. And they, had a whole, they have a whole team that triages and goes and responds to different things. And so again, it's the complete opposite of a one-person show. Uh, a person who has 10 different job descriptions um, versus an entire command center. But listening to what people are saying about you is, is critical in the community. As Jason said up here, we're talking about social media and what is social media. I think it's one of the most powerful pieces of social media is you can now hear. I mean, people love to share stuff. My wife asks me all the time, she goes, why do people write that stuff on Twitter and Facebook? Like, not only the who cares things, but why are people writing that stuff? People like to share. People like it when they share stuff and somebody else comments back. There's some you know, instant gratification of that. Uh, so, so listen to see what people are saying about your show. We're going to go through um, some live examples um, and show you how you can listen and see what people are saying, show you some tools as well. OK, so um, the third <coughs> concept of being there before the sale that I think is really critical is associating your name and your avatar, your profile picture with your company or your event or your association or something. So that's the idea of having some type of spokesperson or, or a group of people who represent who you are. So um, I grabbed this, actually this is from CES it looks like. Yeah. You look at the, uh, yeah, the top left, well, it's from CES. So, you know, when so I look at the, What's that? It said suitcaser. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I look at this picture, now this is for me, but when I look at this picture of Rick, my first thought right away is Blog World. And so Rick has created this personal brand, too, and we'll talk about the personal versus professional brand. He's blended these two worlds very nicely because when I, when I see that picture, when I see Rick, the first thing that comes to my mind is Blog World. Now, as Rick and I were talking about last night, too, there's obviously other people that, that make sure that show happens every year, now twice a year. Um, but he still is the face of Blog World. Jason, have you seen this? Oh, wow. So when I see this guy, who's also this guy, you'll notice just similarities between poses. Jason tends to. Uh, when he, when he gets his picture taken, he tends to do those, that very common pose. The Rob Morris and the Abra. Um, when, I, when I see that picture, when I see that name, that avatar, when I hear Jason Falls, I think of Social Media Explorer. I think of exploring social media. I think of social media. All these things come to mind. So Jason's also done a really nice job of building his personal brand, professional brand, and just blending these two together. And third example. <laughs> 
It's me. <laughs> this is actually me jumping off uh, the building in Salt Lake City. This is my personality. If you you know have a couple beers of me, this comes out even more. Uh, a couple more cups of coffee, it comes out even more. But this is my personality. And so um, ideally, if I'm building my community the way that I think it should be done, when you see my name, DJ Waldo, when you search for DJ Waldo in Google or Bing, when you see my avatar, when you go to my profile picture, whatever the case is, you should think email marketing. Ideally, you think of the company I work for also, Blue Sky Factory. So those, all of those worlds blend together. Um, I don't know if we'll talk directly about this too, but I'm a big believer in keeping your, um, whatever profile picture you use, keeping it consistent across all of your channels. Um, you want to be able to, I mean, when I, go, when I go to events, people recognize this, and they're looking for that. I mean, you ever see people that are, that, are, that are going on Facebook, and you go to an event, you're looking at your phone, you're kind of looking around at different people's faces. If they're different, it gets a little bit confusing. In fact, you know, Rick, you and I were talking about this last night, how you changed your personal profile picture. Um, it used to just be the Blog World logo, and now it's your face inside the Blog World, you know, with the Blog World logo behind. Yeah. Uh, if you look at Jason, Jason's picture is pretty consistent. In fact, what you're wearing today. Yeah, this is the shirt I'm wearing. I mean, I, even when I speak, I have the black shirt on, and I typically do the eyebrow croc so people know who I am. And, and that's, but that's important. So I'm, I'm curious from you, do you have that today, currently with your associations? Do you have somebody who is that, you know, whether it's the, the leader of the organization or some of the organization that is kind of the face of? Do you all have that? A lot of blank stares. <laughs> okay, I think you've answered my question. Um, now, this is not for everybody. Remember, you have to have that passion to do it. You have to have the expertise. But I strongly recommend if you're managing a community, you want to have at least a person, if not a group of people, who when you think of that company, you think of the person, the vice versa. I think that's really, really great. I think we're, we're all used to maybe having our logos or our show info as the picture. Can so you talk about the downside of that, if, assuming yeah. we're not doing that, because we're, we're not a personality. I am not prefix, but I, I'm passionate about it. There's things about it, but I'm not, you know, I'm not it for everybody. So we use, you know, we use a logo, and I've seen other people's sites all use logos too. So what? Talk about well, I, so my, my reaction to you is, when was the last time that you had a conversation with the logo? Well, the logo represents the company. It could be different. I'm being a little bit. I'm being a little bit snarky, but I mean, for the most part, people did you have don't a, talk did you have with a logos. Have conversation with the logo with Frontier. That's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah. <laughs> well, there was, but the difference was you they used. Jane, you were talking to. Sure. The logo and what and what a lot of companies will do also is they'll use um, initials next to when they're tweeting or when they're responding in, in different social networks. So, and you go to their Facebook page or you go to their Twitter profile and you'll see the different personalities next to it. So if you go to Blue Sky Factory's Twitter account, you'll see my picture and two other individuals who tweet on behalf of our company. Okay, so, you. yeah. So, so I thought exactly the same thing as you. And, and I think it is important that you're representing your brand. Uh, but another friend of ours, Chris Brogan, told me, no, it needs to be your face. You are the show. And, I, and, and my reply was, again, similar to yours. I don't want my face to be the show. I'm not the show. What happens if I, I don't work there someday? So, so I, that's why I, I went to this medium where it's the logo of the show in the background. It's my face in the front. And I'm not the only face of the show. We've got four people now who are those brand ambassadors. And, and this is what we talked about. It's easy to hate a company. It's hard to hate a person. And so if you do have people that are those human representatives of your brand, it, it, DJ's point is exactly right. It's, it just feels different when you're talking to someone on Twitter or Facebook or one of those places and you see their face, not a logo. So again, I'm not saying it's right for everybody, but there's a, more of a human connection if there's a face, a person that I can identify with that brand. And, and for, for most of us, we have lots of faces that people identify with our brand. We have ambassadors. There are board members. There are conference directors. There are the salespeople. There are the president of the association. All those people should be faces of the show. Uh, Chuck Schwartz, he's like my mentor from the SEMA show. If you go to SEMA, literally everyone knows him. Everyone. 
And that is a great thing. But it, but it is tricky, though. I, I do agree with you. And you, you, I mean, I'm glad you challenged me on the frontier thing, because you're right. I mean, in Southwest is the same way. They have their logo. Um, and so in, in that case, it's not bad. I think the difference that they, what they do is they're still communicating to me like a human. And so they're responding to me. I mean, I just happen to, again, know the person behind that. So when I see those replies come to me, I picture Christy Day. I, I actually picture her face and, and think about her tweeting that. Uh, so I don't think it's entirely bad to have the logo. I think you can do it a couple different ways. So like, like Rick does, you can either have um, the logo in the background with your face, or you can, with your face in the foreground, or you can do kind of the opposite and have the logo be the big thing and then you know, your face in one of the corners, um, something like that. Well, so along those lines, I mean, for my association with Twitter, it's all amazing. But, I mean, the logo is what we use for Avatar, but I'm the only person that uses Twitter. Whereas for Facebook, we have multiple admins for the pages, and although most of the posts come from the page with the logo, any comments or replies to other people's wall posts there come from the individual. Oh, that's good. I so like that, yeah. it's kind of mixing it up because a lot of people might have their settings on Facebook where if an individual posts on the wall, you won't see it in your newsfeed. Right. But if the page does, it will show up. Well, so, and, and so in, in that case, though, too, I would, I would think about uh, for those different profiles, having somewhere on each of those, so mm -hmm. on Facebook and on Twitter, and Twitter's very easy because you create your own background, mm -hmm. um, but being very clear and open about who is tweeting on behalf of you, because again, it, it adds that face to it, so you can see who's, um, who is actually responding. Some people do it like uh, with a little carrot and mm -hmm. then their initials next to each one, mm -hmm. um, and you can even do that on Facebook. There's no reason you can't do that on Facebook even if you're behind the program, right. because you know, people start, and this is the case with blogs too, is you might read a corporate blog, but there's one particular blogger that you really find fascinating, and you read their articles more frequently than you read others. So if you can put that, if you can associate that face with it, um, I think it's ideal. Obviously it doesn't work in all situations, but I, I think to myself, if I'm doing, serving my community well, and serving my company well, when people see that, they think email. And I will tell you, it is it is it has happened over time. I get I get at least two or three tweets every week of somebody saying um, somebody on my behalf responding and saying, "Oh, you want to talk about email marketing? You should talk to DJ Walden." That's because I've spent the time building that community. And the same thing, you want to talk about social media? You know, go could to Jason. You, could you uh, bring up Scott Monty's Twitter page real quick? Yeah. So Scott Monty is the social media director for Ford, one of the 10 biggest companies in the world. And 